Good morning children. Welcome back to English online class of Sri Gogulam Public School, Guru Ayu. I hope you all are doing great and staying safe at home. Yes? So shall we start our today's session? Okay. Today we will deal with a new topic, subject, verb, agreement. So before moving to the subject, verb, agreement, let's have a recap of what we have studied in our previous class. So children, what are words? Verbs are words that denote action. For example, read, write, jump, play, swim, etc. All these are verbs. The verb also tells us what someone or something is, the condition of the subject. It also tells what is possessed by the subject, what the subject owns. So now let's move to a new topic, subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement is also known by the name concord. It's also known as concord. So children, what is a subject? We have already discussed in our previous class. Still, let's revise it. So what is a subject? I'll give you some examples. We'll start with some examples. Then you'll get a better understanding. For example, the students have done the exercise. Here, which is the subject children? It is the students. So how can you identify uh, subject in a sentence? You can ask who or what to the verb. As now you are thorough with the topic verbs, you can ask who or what to the verb. So when you ask who or what to the verb, you get the answer to the subject. So who have done the exercise? It is the students. So the students is the subject in this sentence. Otherwise, just see who is the doer of the action in a sentence. Here who is the doer who is doing the action? It is the students. Or else you can see what the sentence is talking about. Here the sentence is talking about the students. So the students is the subject. Let me give you some more examples. Mother is preparing the breakfast. Here which is the subject children? It is mother. Who is preparing? Mother is preparing. So mother is the subject in this sentence. He has already submitted the project. Here which is the uh, subject children? Who has submitted? He. He has submitted. So, so he is the subject in this sentence. It is raining still. Which is the subject in the sentence children? It is it. I hope you understood how to identify a subject in a sentence. Yes. So now let's move to the details of subject verb agreement. The basic definition of subject verb agreement or concord goes as such. The verb in a sentence has to agree with the subject in a sentence in number and person. Did you understand? I hope no. Yes, just imagine there are two business partners. Okay. So only if these two business partners go hand in hand or have agreement, only then they can run the business successfully, right? Only if they agree with each other, only if they are in uh, agreement with each other, they can run the business successfully. Similarly, only if the subject and the verb in a sentence has an agreement with each other, only then we can frame a correct sentence. It has to go hand in hand. It has to agree with each other. Only then we can frame a correct sentence. The verb is plural when the subject is a plural noun or pronoun. The verb is singular when the subject is a singular noun or pronoun. Did you understand? No, right? We will see some examples. For example, a cow eats grass. Cows eat grass. What is the difference in these two sentences? In one sentence I have added S to the verb, in the other sentence I have avoided that S. For a noun to be uh, plural, we have to add S, right? If we, uh, for example, boy, boys, only if we add S to the boy, it becomes a plural noun. Girl, girls, book, books, ball, balls, bat, bats. So only if we add S to the nouns, it becomes a plural noun. But it is just the opposite in case of verbs. If we add S to the verb, it becomes singular. So we have to avoid or delete that S in order to make a plural verb. That is the difference between these two sentences. A cow eats grass. I am referring to a single cow. So I have to use the singular verb. How can we frame a singular verb? How can we form a singular verb? By adding S at the end of the verb. And how can we make a plural verb? by avoiding that s. Just register in your mind that in order to make a plural noun we have to add s but in order to make a plural verb you have to avoid that s. Just the opposite okay. Okay. 
Then let's see some more examples. A child likes toys. See, I am referring to a single child. So I used likes. Only if we add S to the verb, it becomes singular. Children like toys. Like. Children is a plural subject. My uncle prefers tea to coffee. Referring to a single uncle, my uncle. My parents prefer tea to coffee. Parents means two persons, father and mother, right? So it's a plural subject, my parents. So I used only prefer. Amras plays chess every day. Here I'm referring to a single boy, Amras. So I can use plays. If I say Amras and Amit play chess every day, I have to use only play because I'm referring to two persons. So I have to use only play. Next, Ashwadi writes stories. As Ashwadi is a single girl, I have to use writes. If I say Ashwadi and Nandana write stories, I am referring to two girls. So I have to use only write. I hope you understood how the verb and the subject has to agree with each other, right?